On this episode of Doing the Most, we're gonna make a Lucky Charms Meadow Foam Mead. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from mead to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. So what do you do when you become a winning member of the Lucky Charms Marshmallow Only Club? Well, you make a winning mead. By the recommendation of Reddit's mead sub, I decided to make a milk stout and age it on Lucky Charms marshmallows. I won this box of Lucky Charms marshmallows in one of those uh, cereal box contests where you have the code on the inside and you enter it in a, in a website and they shipped it to me and it got to my house relatively quick and then the choice comes what do you what do you do with this i'm not just gonna pour it into a bowl of milk and eat it and so as my mind started ticking i thought about various baked goods or maybe we should just make a mead out of it so i pitched it over to reddit's mead sub that i was going to do this and the the comments recommended that i do a milk stout with meadow foam honey. What else do you do but get on the internet and find meadow foam honey? I had a milk stout kit in the spare room that I decided would make good fodder for this experiment. So we opened it up to see what we could do. It came with all the ingredients, the lactose, maltodextrin, specialty grains, all of that. And what I just decided to do is follow the instructions but eliminate the light liquid malt extract and, and sub in the meadow foam honey raw for that. So uh, I'm not really gonna give you like an ingredients list or really a, a full-fledged process because literally all I did was adapt this milk stout kit to work for this purpose. So uh, just follow along as your kit sees fit. The, the, goal, <laughs> the goal of this experiment was to see what happens with the meadow foam in the stout kit and what happens to the Lucky Charms marshmallows as it ages and secondary. So I divided out all of my ingredients, got my mash water up to temperature, and threw in those specialty grains to steep for about a half an hour. Meadow foam blossom honey is marshmallowy. That's that is really the best way I can describe it. It tastes like marshmallows. It got a very vanilla kind of thing going on with it, and it was kind of thick, um, not not runny like like you'd expect from like a wildflower or clover honey. And then the marshmallows obviously tasted like marshmallows and everything in here basically, but the starch is fermentable mostly. So we'll, we'll see how that does in secondary. So like I said, I'm not gonna boil the honey. So I just went ahead and opened all those up, poured them into the sanitized carboy, and then I filled each one with spring water, shook them up, shook them up, shook them up, poured them in. So I finally had all of my honey in there. And this ended up being about four and a half pounds of honey. I probably could have could have done up to six or seven, but they sold them in, in sets of six. So this was really the easiest way of doing it. So after our grains steep for a half an hour, we are going to pull that bag and then run a little bit of spring water through that just to rinse the grains. Then the dark liquid malt extract goes in as well as our lactose and maltodextrin. Lactose is what gives a milk stout its kind of milky, smooth consistency. And as you've seen in my videos before, maltodextrin just gives a gives a beer or a braggot some chew. It, it thickens up the mouthfeel a little bit. And once that comes up to a boil, it's time to add our hops. This kit came with Cascade hops. And there were two editions, a bittering edition at the beginning, and then a little bit later in the boil, an aroma edition. And then with 15 minutes to go, for my convenience, I threw in a Whirlflock tablet to help it clear once uh, fermentation is completed. And then at the hour mark, I pulled my hops basket and strained that out. So I just put the whole brew kettle into an ice bath in the sink and then topped it up with cold water so I could just crash that temperature down as low as possible, as quick as possible. Then I moved it over to the bench and racked it off into our carboy on top of the honey. And you can see it's got a really beautiful dark kind of Coca-Cola color to it, very, very dark. And so even when it's clear, it's gonna be relatively opaque. I also, because this was gonna need some time to, to come down to room temperature, I went ahead and added five Campton tablets and just set a reminder to pitch my yeast in 24 hours. 24 hours later, with my Lucky Charms in tow, I added the yeast. This is just a Nottingham Ale yeast, and this should do a pretty good job of cutting 
cutting through all the fermentable sugars in here. If my math was right, this should come out to between eight and 9% alcohol. And I'm just gonna pretty much trust the kit in this process. This took a little bit over a week to ferment down to 1.0, and then I give it about another week, week and a half, for all of that sludge to settle out. The meadow foam honey seemingly had quite a bit of beeswax in it, and so it settled in these kind of cool striations at the bottom. So I wanted to, to let that firm up before I racked it off. So this is where the fun begins. I opened up the Lucky Charms marshmallows for the first time since they had graced my presence. And uh, pretty much as soon as the bag on the inside was opened, it filled the kitchen with what smelled a whole hell of a lot like Saturday morning cartoons. As an 80s, early 90s kid, I was getting a real Pee Wee's Playhouse vibe uh, just opening this up. I uh, tasted a few. They. Uh, they tasted just like what you would imagine. And then I began filling the fermenter. I, I don't have a funnel uh, with a wide enough neck to, to funnel these in. So I was basically just guiding them from the box with my hand into the carboy, trying my best to get them all inside. And then I racked my meadow foam milk stout on top. It's so beautiful. It's just so magical. And of course, take those Instagram pictures. You don't want to let your followers down. And so begins an experiment I'm sure I will not regret. Now, I was going to take some footage of this as secondary kicked off and the fermentation did its thing. But these marshmallows, whatever they're comprised of, they basically dissolved within the first 24 hours of being inside this carboy. They went from floating on top to kind of swollen and engorged to dissolving and dropping straight through to the bottom of the carboy pretty quickly. There was a brief period where there was blue foam at the top and then the sludge at the bottom obviously was a technicolor of blue. So it's time to bottle this and it's we're about the five week mark. For this bottling day, I chose a cherry sour mead. <laughs> sour, astringent, and weirdly smooth, but it's got a beautiful effervescence to it that I'm very into. There's a, I believe a picture of that on our Instagram, actually, if you wanna go check that out quite lovely. That's one cup of boiled water mixed with three ounces of dextrose sitting in front of me there. That's going to act as our priming sugar. And that's just going to go right into our bottling bucket and I will rack on top. Also, I was doubling up my brew day that day. So that's why there's some citrus in the stars and bucket sanitizing. This made about 51 bottles, I believe, of magically delicious meadow foam stout. And of course, as always, I made certain to pull off a taste. And so this taste I pulled off prior to the priming sugar. So uh, it is dry and uh, it, it was still young in its fermentation cycle. So there's a little bit of a funk in the air around it. The taste was at first very much like cereal. Like if I had to equate it, I would say like Alphabet's cereal weirdly enough. And then as you swallow and exhale and breathe out, you you kind of start to get those marshmallowy, meadow foamy notes. So this is gonna condition for about three weeks and then hopefully we'll do a tasting some point soon after that. So stay tuned. And uh, Reddit, thank you for the ideas on this and I'm glad I could ride this weird mead journey with you. Thank you all for watching. Our website is doingthemost.org. And as you know, you can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at doingthemostok. Okay. Until next time, friends, have a magically delicious day.